Hmm. Just wanted to take a quick moment and show some flurf magic live, right? So we have NASA predicting eclipses. NASA eclipse website. It's a little bit strange. Seems to show the sphere. Oh, look, that has all these uh, predictions. But you start to look into it and say, well, hey, NASA, where did you... Where did you get your predictions exactly? Like, how does this work? It's from heliocentricity and, and forces and, I imagine, you know, gravity, Newtonian, orbital mechanics, and all that good stuff, right? Well, it seems like you can have NASA's data if you accredit who they took it from, who was Fred Espinak, who is responsible for the accuracy. Well, that's weird. Is this from, like, a different book that... Oh, wait, that looks like it's from the same book? Well, hold on, wait. This, are you saying that NASA gets all their... Eclipse predictions from a dude called. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is... they, they have to cite Fred when they talk about eclipses? I thought they were making one of these wonderful predictions. Or. Well, no, that can't be. It has to be that they're making these predictions. So let's see. Let me grab their actual predictions for what this eclipse is going to look like. And, well, yeah, well, that's definitely a globe. It's definitely on a globe. It couldn't possibly happen to any other shape of, of form of Earth. But, Wait a second, it looks like we can tweak this a little bit to keep the data and move that eclipse to a different map type. That that seems to be alright, right? It seems to still show the same thing, but what happens when we go to here? It's like, oh no! Oh wait, look, it's the same data displayed perfectly. Now we can see where the eclipse will happen, and it seems like there's nothing significant about heliocentricity, orbital mechanics, gravity, Newtonian physics, mass attracting mass, or anything like that required. It seems to be based on observations over time by a book written from a guy who worked at NASA who actually just took his information from the Soros cycle and then transcribed it in, an, in a way to make it useful for others to use. So if every prediction comes from this table, aren't they all post-dictions? Therefore, heliocentricity cannot predict eclipses. All right, now for a brief interlude where we show you behind the curtains of Flurf Magic. In other words, what you find when you actually research, comprehend, and textually analyze, and then interpret things that you read and information that you gather. Magic. Here we go. And just for the record, if I'm publicly commenting on, on anything, you can assume that this is at least the level of research and backup that I have to speak on, okay? Uh, let's go through where we got our information. Oh, look, from the books that we read, people, we do read books. Alex Gleason wrote a book. You may remember him from the map that you erroneously like to point out <laughs> all the time. He did write a book. Uh, we did read the book. And in the book, he actually describes all of this wonderful things for you people. So, five astronomical lines of time, ways to keep time, solar cycle, lunar cycle, eclipses, transits, very important. And then you have recorded history and all the stuff that we have. We have a 651 great astronomical year. That's 651 years in the great astronomical year, also referred to as a gay, G-A-Y in here. And it offsets between cycles of 325 and 326 to get specific. And within that is comprised of the 18-year lunar cycle, which then has an oscillation, which is 10 and 11, 10 or 11 days. It's not quite clear, right? And then it's, it oscillates 10, then 11, 10, then 11, and then the regular solar cycle, which goes through the transit cycle, and then we have the recorded history. So these are the different ways we can account for it and track time. And through this, we understand eclipses, right? So essentially, the 18 years, so the 18 and 10 or 11 day solar uh, lunar cycle is the time it takes like, the team of eclipse to make a 360 degree circuit around the realm, right? That's its cycle. Once it repeats, it repeats and repeats, repeats and repeats. So essentially, once we divide it into the revolutions and we take a look at the components, we see that it is only made of the forever oscillation between the sun and the moon, which through their pathways intersect at interceding places, which they call nodes, and that those nodes rotate around with the, with the path of the orbit. So there are 70 eclipses in an 18-year cycle. Once you have that number down, you have within that the pairs of eclipses, which you equate to each other. When you know one, you know the other. That is how pairing with eclipses works, right? Once you have one, then you have the other. And once you have the, the revolution, you know when it will start and stop. Essentially, this is how we know when eclipses will happen, right? Nobody is predicting this in any way, especially not using Newtonian physics, gravity, mass attracting mass, orbital mechanics, anything like that. Okay, this is old, old, old news that they have tricked you into thinking that they could predict because heliocentrism. 
So I'm not going to go through all the stuff that we have and all the quotes that I referenced, the source material, the application before we went to it, how we deduced what this would be, how it would uh, fit into the solar cycle, how the metonic cycle is different from the solar cycle and how the Soro cycle is different from all three and purposely complicated and separated. The Soro cycle are independent series of eclipses taken out of context. So if you looked at them, you'd have no idea what they were, how they connected. They did that on purpose. So that is the cycle that you guys think we use. And here's how it actually works, right? We go through the old school books who already did all the work. We understand where we're coming from and our foundation. And then we take to the maps, right? We take to our representation of what we're looking at. So we know this cycle, we know the components, we know the solar and the lunar components, and we know it operates in teams. So let's take a stab at plotting it down. Oh look, let's put some baselines, equator, both tropics, good to go. There's the first pair. That's where they'd appear. Note, we can also predict the penumbra and umbra using a ratio derived from the same paper uh, from the, the person who creates all the uh, recommendations for Sora. Uh, for NASA, right? <laughs> so nothing, nothing predicted. All right. So we have the first pair, second pair, third pair, fourth pair, a couple other pairs coming up, two dots at a time. We're predicting the cycle. See how it's moving to the round. See how it's completing itself. See how it's hyperbolically completing itself simultaneously. Now we have a circle. Now we have the rest. Oh, now we have the rest of the circle. Now we have the whole 18 year eclipse cycle with pairs of 70 in between 70 dots. The, all the pairs super easy and then we can translate this and predict in perpetuity when any eclipse will happen holy cow how, how did that happen must have been heliocentricity you must have missed it rewind the tape go back we do the same thing with the solar cycle right we get the same equivalency we find out that it's a little bit cleaner than the moon we use those two in tandem together in oscillation perform this sort of dance that results in a semi-diurnal oscillation where they intercede back and forth through the intersection of lunar nodes that also creates the uh, harmonic frequency of the tides uh, in a semi-diurnal oscillation happy side note we'll get to that presentation later and then we have this clock feature that we can see when we line up the eclipses this is mostly for artistic pleasure but again here we have one complete lunar cycle pathed out on the map and we can see the oscillation it would take as it would turn right so we can just take all of the eclipses then and have the oscillation as it would turn and we can see what it would look like. right so we can just tell you that we've predicted all these things when actually we've posted them right we had the cycle and i'm just going to draw them independently and i could say make something up and say hey because a unicorn fairy just farts i can tell you when that eclipse is going to transit right i know exactly when and where it will appear and you'd be like oh wow that's crazy i had no idea you could predict it using unicorn farts and i'd be like yeah see there it is and you'd have nothing to refute me with so this is why everything you don't know gets used against you and here's another period of the same period of city that we had mapped out with uh, the almost appropriate but number with the predictions from 2006 to 2014 all on one map super easy again they like to spread it out on the mercator to keep you off uh, disconcerted and off your toes and again more the same periodicity of this cycle clipped through here backed up by gleason over here with a little bit of a compilation all of these dates by the way found in gleason's book you guys should do some reading it wouldn't hurt okay now again <laughs> Anytime we comment on things publicly, anytime people from Ether Cosmology make a comment publicly, you have to assume we have at least this level of backup. So continue making fools of yourself or do some research yourselves. Your, your choice, guys.